Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Blue Metals. I want to make a quick video to respond to a question that was posted in a blacksmithing forum. Somebody asked, how do you get the hammer handle separated from the head of the hammer itself? And depending on how it's attached, there's one of a few different methods that you can use. Being that I have a bunch of tools, I said, hey, you can use an arbor press or a hydraulic press and a punch. Um, and everybody said, yeah, that's a really good way to do it. It's the fastest way to do it. But what if you don't have that? So I even suggested, well, put it on a couple of blocks and you can use a drill press if you have a heavy-duty drill press. Just pull down on the lever, put something like a pin inside of, the, um, inside of the chuck, and you can actually push the handle out as if you had a regular arbor press. Well, someone said, well, what if you don't have a drill press? What's the old-school way of doing it? So today I'm going to answer that question. All right, guys, so I looked around my shop and I found four candidates for handle replacement. Um, normally, if I have a hammer that breaks, I just grab another hammer. I don't take the time to put new handles on them right away unless I really need to. I go to a lot of tag sales and estate sales, and whenever I see hammers, hammer heads, um, out of habit, I just pick them up. Now, I've got a sledgehammer, two ball peen hammers, and an axe head, and they are all kind of in a different situation. The axe head has a huge wedge put inside the head, along with the broken off handle. So I'll show you how to get around that. This is one of those job lot hammers. You usually get them in a set of five. It's got a cheesy fiberglass handle. A lot of people will buy these for the heads and just take the handles off and put new handles on. But you can see that the, uh, the plug on top broke out of there, and I really don't like how that's in there. It's, it'll probably hold, but um, I want to put a wooden handle on this and you know give it a more traditional look and feel. Now this is a hammer I picked up at a tag sale. Um, regular ball peen hammer, but you could see, and if you uh, go to tag sales or you go into some people's shops, they don't have wedges, they'll just throw a nail in there. This thing has three different nails, and if you look really close, you can see that the top of the hammer kind of rolls over to uh, cover the top of the handle. So this has to be driven from the top down to get the handle out, even with all these nails in the way. Last but not least, Got the sledgehammer. You can see that the handle's all cracked through here. And it's just not safe anymore, and I want to replace the handle. The tools I'm going to need for this project are relatively simple. I'm going to be using a lead hammer. You can use a brass hammer or any other soft metal. I've got a punch, a hacksaw, and two wooden blocks. Now the hacksaw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all of the handles off of these off camera and then come back. The last thing that you're going to want to have, a pair of safety glasses. Whenever you're using a punch and a hammer, even if it's soft metal, always protect your eyes. Alright guys, I'm going to start off with the two ball peen hammers. Uh, I've got the one that's got the synthetic handle in it. Uh, I think it's some kind of fiberglass. And then I've got the one with the wooden handle in it. And as you can see, I cut both handles off. Um, the reason I suggested using a hacksaw for this, uh, in this case where you have a bunch of nails sticking through the top, if you hit one of the nails with a wood cutting blade, it, uh, it could you know, damage the blade a little bit, or uh, it's, you know, it's just not going to go through anyway, so you might as well just use a hacksaw and cut through. Um, I just avoided the nails entirely, but you want to just cut it off so you have some clearance in your blocks. So let's start with these. I'm going to put my safety glasses on. and. The fiberglass handle is going to be the easier of the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this here, grab my punch, yeah, that was real easy. The handle was garbage, but it's a halfway decent hammerhead. So let me try the other one with all these nails. Now with this particular one, this nail is actually, I don't know how well you could see it, but this nail is clearing that little lip. So I'm going to put my punch right on top of that nail, try to drive the handle through, and these two nails, if they grab this lip, um, it's going to take a while to beat, but these might just pop out of the wood going this way. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Get my blocks together here. starting to come out.
Now you can do this in a vise. Um, I like the blocks of wood because I'm not hitting metal on metal like the vise jaws would. Makes it fly around a little bit more, but um, yeah, she's coming out. And there we go. Alright YouTube, here we are with the axe head. Now normally I wouldn't use the two block method with an axe, but since this has a flat back, um, it's pretty easy to do. Now I'm going to try top tapping from the bottom with the punch, because this wood is very old. I'm going to send the punch right through it and see if I could get to the bottom of this wedge and drive the wedge up a little bit. And I drilled a little bit of a pilot hole. Alright, I think I'm on the wedge. Well, it came up a little bit. I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to get it. Can't tell if that's up a little more or not. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the punch out. I'm going to have to put it in the vise and twist the axe head off because it's really in there. And I'm going to come back with my cordless drill and drill a couple of holes in the wood just to kind of uh, move some material out of there so the punch can be a little more effective. But this, this is working and it is starting to come out. And now I can actually, I think I can see the top of the wedge. There you go. Alright YouTube, here is the sledgehammer head. Now, with these hammers you want to try to cut this as flat as you can. The smoother the surface, the flatter the surface, the easier it is it's going to be to set a punch on this and drive, drive it through. Um, I am going to change one thing. Uh, I was using this as a punch for all of my, uh, my other removals. I'm actually just going to switch to a piece of round stock. I'm using the round stock because, as you can see, there's just a bit much bigger diameter here and it's going to work better considering the size of this. With fiberglass, you want to have as much surface area as you can because you don't want to push down the fibers and expand the fiberglass inside the head. So the more surface area you have on your punch, the better. Let's see if I can get this puppy out. There you go. 
the bottom's going to need a little bit of cleanup. There's still um, some of the broken handle itself in there that I could just punch out. Now the reason I'm making this video, uh, somebody said, well why not just burn the handles out? Well if you have a wooden handle, yes you can burn the handles out, but what's going to happen? If you have a tool that's been properly tempered and heat treated, you're going to change the entire temper of the metal. So putting it in the fire, you're going to make your hand hammer soft or too hard, it may become um, brittle and break, or you start getting nicks and dings in the face because you just completely softened it. So this is the best way to remove a hammer handle if you don't have some kind of a press. Now I have one more hammer head to show you. I just found it when I was looking for this little piece of tool stock. This is another ball peen hammer head and uh, this one I bought at a tag sale as it is. Uh, it was in a bucket with a bunch of other old wrenches and things. And you can see that this one was actually pretty nicely made. It had the three wedges in there. The center wedge apparently rotted out. The whole handle kind of rotted out. But um, what do you do if your handle isn't completely flush? Well, you could still use the same principle to get this out. It doesn't matter if the handle, you cut it off or it breaks off. As long as you use the punch and you try to get it over where these wedges are, it'll come out. It might be a little hard to line up because the wood's jagged inside, but if you're patient, there, there's one piece of wood out already. Now for the other side. We got a second. And there you go. Alright YouTube, well I'm about ready to wrap up another video. Before I do, I want to talk a little bit more about this axe head. Now, you saw me drive that punch in there, and yes, it did get stuck. I took it off camera, put it in the jaws of the vise, and wiggled it until it came out. It was pretty easy to do. This punch has a gnarled handle, and in the jaws of the vise, it locked in really nice and tight, and I was just able to wiggle the head off. A little bit hard to do by hand, but uh, I was able to get it out and try again. Now, normally what I would do in a situation like that, I would try to find the center point, drive through the wood, because this punch will go through wood to, um, it'll crush the wood to an extent. And I was hoping to push that shim out, and obviously it didn't pan out that way. So, I had to remove the punch, drilled a couple of holes, rounded out the holes until I could actually see the top of the metal. Now, this particular shim in here was made out of lead. So, I wasn't worried about hurting my drill bit at all. I wasn't worried about the drill bit getting caught and, you know, twisted in my hand or anything like that. Once I saw where the shiny spot was in the metal, I was able to put the punch in, put it right on top of it, and knock the handle out. But the whole point of this video is, if you don't have the big expensive tools, the hydraulic press or the arbor press or even a drill press, you can still get the job done. Now, a lot of us who are starting out, and I know it might sound weird me saying I'm just starting out, but as far as blacksmithing goes, I really am. I'm still brand new at this. I don't have a lot of good blacksmith tongs or tooling. And I'm using a lot of my metalworking tools to, uh, to suffice. Like I don't have proper punches and drifts and things like that. Um, but everybody has to start somewhere. And if all you have is a punch and a hammer, you can still get the job done. You can still get your hammer handles out and you can um, refurbish your hammers, recondition them, whatever you need to do. So with a little bit of know-how and a little bit of elbow grease, you can definitely get the job done. So on that note, I'm going to end the video here. This has been Jeff at Darko Metals, and I'll see you again soon.